Psalms chapter 139. Psalms chapter 139 tonight. We'll be looking down at verses 1 through verse 12. When you find your place, you may stand in honor of reading of God's Word. And uh, we'll uh, look at this scripture. I, I could probably read the entire chapter tonight, but I'm going to try to refrain myself from not doing so. I believe Psalms chapter 139 is a man called David that finds himself in a place. He's searching for something. He's searching for something from God. And we see here in the scripture, verse number one, the Bible says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down settings and my uprisings. Thou understandest my faults afar off. Thou compa compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. And there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, laid my thine hand upon me. What a blessing. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, it is I cannot attain it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If thou makest my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy <coughs> right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not. From thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Let us pray. Father, I now do pray that you have your blessings on the reading of thy word. And Lord, that you just help us through this message tonight. And I pray, God, thy will be done. Amen and amen. In the scripture, as you're being seated in the scripture tonight, I want to say just a few things on this thought. Does God have Control. I mentioned that this morning. And I said that you would think with all that's going on around about in this world today, you would wonder if God was in control. Or is something else taking place, Father, I, and I, church, and I believe without a doubt that what is taking place and what's going on, as we have said, is only that of prophecy of the Word of God. I believe that more and more every day that day goes by, we're getting a little closer, just a little closer to being home with the Father. I want you to understand that I want to assure you, as I said this morning, God is still in control, church. God is just as much as control in this world as he is in your life if you are letting him. I see David here in the scripture. A man, as I said, searching for something from God. He is searching to see if God is in control and through his words we definitely see that God was in control of David's life. Now understand David was not a perfect man. Know and remember that David has messed up and David has committed sin but yet God still loved him just like he loves you, just like he wants to take care of you and God was willing, God was willing to show David that he was in control. David said, O Lord, thou, know, thou hast searched me and known me. Now, if you will, just flip over to the last part of the chapter and look at verse 23. He said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. As though David is speaking a little out of turn there, a little out of sequence there within what he's already said. He already knows that God knows his thoughts, knows his words, knows everything there is to know about him. God has already searched him and tried him, but David is at a point in his life where he knows now that, and understand that God is in complete control of his life. And he's basically saying at the point at the end of the chapter, then Lord, since you know me, since you have tried me, then you take my life 
and do what you want to. In that verse 24, he said, And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. He was basically searching and asking God if there's anything else in my life that's going to keep me from serving you, then remove it. Folks, I believe tonight that if we understand that God is in control of our lives, that we would want to stay pure and be clean with him and get free of all the things in our lives that's keeping us from being used of him. So we see here that no matter how bad things seem to get in this world, no matter uh, if all the world turns against God, which they probably will, even if your own personal world crumbles down around you, understand and know that God is still in control. And I pray that he is in control of your life. As we look through the scripture again, as I'm just kind of going down through here, and I understand as he is talking that God knows everything that there is to know. God knows everything that's going on in David's life even to the point where he knows uh, the words that proceed out of his mouth. But he said, Thou knowest all, it all together. It's like he said, Lord, there's nothing I can do or anything that I can say or can't do or can't say that you don't already know about. Why? Because God is in control. When, what we see here tonight is a servant's heart that is obedient to the will of God and is allowing God to control all areas of their life. I ask you tonight, is God controlling your life? Is God in control of every area of your life? And if God is in control, then you will be an obedient servant unto God. I said, I, I, I said, I read something today, I mentioned my wife, and I said, I'm going to use it, and I'm going to, because it's just there, there in my mind. But Charles Spurgeon made the statement, you might have saw it today, but Charles Spurgeon made the statement, uh, before you could ever get filled, you got to get empty of everything else. Church, I'm here to tell you, before we ever get the Spirit of God filled in our hearts and our lives, in our church, uh, before we can ever get a revival meeting in our lives uh, and in our community and see God change and do something to the hearts of people around us, before we see God, a great movement of God uh, in a Holy Spirit way, we ourselves have got to get empty of the things of this world and the things in our lives. I preached a message one time, and I believe I preached it here, entitled, uh, Running Empty So You Can Be Filled. Folks, sometimes you got to run her down to the empty line so you can get it filled back up, uh, so you can be full of what needs to be there. Folks, sometimes uh, we just need to get filled up with the Holy Ghost of God, but we got to get empty of everything else. Uh, God is not in the evil of this world, church. Please understand that. God is not in the wickedness uh, that is taking place in this world. Uh, God knows no sin, uh, and the one who commits that sin, uh, and the one that is obeying that sin, uh, God won't have anything to do with them uh, until they get right with God. Uh, let's, go, let's not blame God for everything that's going on. Oh, you say, well, and it's easy for us to say and spiritualize things and say, well, God is allowing this to happen. Uh, folks, I'm here to tell you, yes, God might be allowing things to happen, uh, but just because uh, the virus came, uh, we, can, we don't need to point our finger at God and say it's his fault. Uh, just because someone gets killed uh, or somebody gets injured uh, or somebody gets robbed, uh, we don't need to point our finger and say it's God's fault. Uh, folks, it's our fault. Uh, we are to blame uh, by allowing things to go like they are. This morning I made the statement that we are condoning things that's going on in this world. We're letting it go without taking a stand and without saying that God's word stands true. We need to take a stand on God's word. Amen. But God is still in control. I said much is on our own shoulders. I hope you get what this verse in Proverbs 25 and 28 it says this. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is taken down and without walls. What's that verse saying? You say, I have no control of the spirit in my life. Sure you do. 
When you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and He came into your heart and He came into your life, church, I'm here to tell you the Spirit of God was alive. It was well. It was on point. And it was ready to be worshipped. And it wanted to worship through you. But over the time, we have allowed things to hinder the Spirit of God. And we have lost the rule of the Spirit in our own lives. And we have become like a city that's been brought down with broken walls and everything in the world's flooded in. Can I say without God in our schools, without God in our homes, without God in our church, without God in our government, without God in our cities, we become unruly, open to a full scale of wickedness. Oh, I hope you understand what I'm saying this morning tonight. I said we become unruly and open to a full scale of wickedness. Church, I'm here to tell you, we've not seen the light at the end of the tunnel. We've not seen the silver lining yet. We've not seen the end of what is yet to come. Folks, what is about what is going on today? It's only going to get worse and worse. Let's face it. Here a while back, we were worried to death that if we went out to the store, that we was going to catch a virus and die the next day or within 48 hours. And now people's mobbing, mobbing the streets by the thousands can care less about what's going on with the virus. And now people are breaking into people's places uh, and burning buildings down and burning churches down uh, and doing the things that they're doing. Uh, and, and we're sitting around uh, and we're thinking, man, can it get any worse? Sure it can. Sure it can. We've only seen the tip of an iceberg of what is yet to come. I'm just so thankful and grateful. And I'm here to testify tonight to, that the church is going to be gone when it gets to its worst point. Yeah. Hallelujah. God's going to blow the trumpet and we're going to step out of here and we're not going to have to go through those uh, uh, those plagues. Uh, we're not going to have to go through the locusts. Uh, we're not going to have to go through the fervent heat. Uh, we're not going to have to go through that stuff. Uh, we'll never have to hear a cry from the church calling the rocks to fall down the phone down. Why? Because we'll be out of here. I'm here to tell you without God being in full control of our lives, we are in danger of losing everything that we have ever worked for, fought for, and had a desire for. I don't know about you, but I don't want to lose the desire. I don't want to lose the passion. I don't want to lose the zeal uh, to worship God and to work, work for God uh, and to preach God's word. Uh, as I was praying today, I said, oh God, I don't want to lose those things. But folks, we are in danger of losing it if we don't let God have full control. You know, let's, un let's understand we are control freaks. We are. We got to have control over certain things in our life, certain things in our family. We got to have our thumb on about everything that goes on, or else we don't have control of it. Hey, some people like a little more control than other people, and we understand that. That's just the nature of human beings. I'm not. I'm not trying to make you uh, anything different. I'm just trying to say, hey, that we are control freaks when it comes to things. We don't want to be told we can't do this or can't do that or. We don't want to do this or don't want to. I'm just saying we are that way. But we've got to get in our spiritual lives to where God is in full control of everything. When he's in full control, it won't go wrong. He'll take care of it. We must realize that God has to have that control if we want to survive in this world we're living in. Sometimes we look around, and I'll be honest, it's real easy to say, well, we're protected where we are. Used to say, we, whenever, but back, back home, we used to talk about, man, we're down here in this valley backed up against the side of the mountain, and man, we're protected by hurricanes and tornadoes and, 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 and things like that. We don't have to worry about that. And it wasn't too long after that, there was a tornado that came through our area about two miles or three miles from where we live, and we was all standing in awe because we're like, how did that ever happen? Don't ever put nothing past God. You say it can't happen, he's going to let it happen just to show you who's in control. We look around and we say, oh, we're protected up here. Oh, we're on the mountain. We're on the mountaintop. God's going to take care of us. 
Folks, I'm telling you, if you're not careful, God will show you who's in control, and he'll say, I'll let something happen just to prove it to you. We've seen the power of God before. I wasn't here, but y'all y'all were. i seen the pictures that y'all posted of the road being tore all the pieces, the bridge being washed out. A scary time and a scary moment. And folks, I, I understand from what I understand, that wasn't the worst of it. Some of you wasn't around in that what they called that 1916 flood. Some of y'all might remember the 1916 flood. I don't know what it done here. I know what it done down the mountain. I know people was washed out of their homes and they were living in a pig pen until they could build another house. It got so bad. I'm saying God's shown his power before and he can do it again. You say, why do you say all that, preacher? Because God wants to be in control. If he has to break us, he will. If he wants to break us, he will. David was a willing heart, had a willing heart to let God have control of his life. As we was reading in the scripture, we seen that he said, try me. He said, search me. He said, if there's anything, remove it. Why? Because he was wanting God to have control of his life. He didn't want anything there to hinder it. I just wonder how many of us is at that point in our lives where we're willing to say, God, if there's anything in my life that might hinder the spirit from moving in our church, that might be, have, hinder the spirit of revival, that might hinder the spirit of, of you growing our church, if, there, if there's anything in my life, will you remove it? Now don't say, don't do like someone said one time. I, I preached a message one time and somebody came to me and said, Pastor, I strongly feel, I heard your message and I strongly feel that, 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 that I'm the problem, so I'm going to remove myself. No, don't, don't remove yourself. Ask God to remove what's in you out. You need to sit still. You need to listen to God. David's will, willing to let God have control of his life. He's willing to let him have, 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 have control of his doing. He said, no matter where I go, Lord. He said, if I go to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. He said, no matter where I go, if I take wings and fly to the sea, you're there. Understand, God is everywhere, and God is in control everywhere. Sometimes people think, well, I'll just get away, and I'll run. I Man, I tell you, I found out a long time ago, you can't run from your problems. You know why? You're taking them with you. And wherever your problems are, wherever you are, that's where your problems. Well, get this. You ain't going to run away from God no matter where you run. God will find you there too because God's there. And David understood that, so he said, Lord, I want you to take control of all my doing. Whatever it is you want me to do, I will do. David become a great servant of God. We know that he may not have got to build the temple, but he got to get all the material together. Folks, listen, we may not ever be the biggest church in, in, that Royal Creek's ever seen, but you know what? We're taking care of business along the way. We're getting the material together to get home. But I believe we're going to get there. He wanted, not only that, but he wanted to, God to have full control of his presence, no matter where I go, Lord. No matter where I go. He said, if I'm in darkness, there'll be light. Because you have the power over darkness. I talked this morning about darkness. I talked about how it looks like darkness of wickedness and sin is overtaking light sometimes. But folks, I'm here to tell you as a child of God, we'll never see the darkness as long as Christ is in control of our life. Let God try you. Let God search you. Let God know everything that there is to know about you. Your thoughts, your desires, your plans, your mind. Even if it means that he has to go through, you have to go through some things to get there. David realized he would have to go through some things. I, I, back, back to the scripture, verse number 13. He said, for thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. No matter, no matter what I have to go through, you covered me. You've taken care of me. Folks, I'm here to tell you, God wants control, even if we have to go through some things to get there. 
Sometimes we have to lose some things along the way. We have to lose some humility. We have to lose uh, uh, some of our pride just so God can have his way and have control. Even if there's something in our lives that needs to be revealed, you say, oh, no, let's not go there. I don't want the world to know what I did. Sometimes, I'll be honest with you, it'd be better if, if everybody knew. Chances are people already do know. You just don't realize it because it's been revealed already. Sometimes if it comes out in the open, it'll get you humble enough to get right with God. Even if we, if we have to be, if, if we have to go through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen? I got to thinking. When David wrote this psalm, for the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What does he say? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know the rest of the psalm. When David was going through something, whenever he wrote that psalm, he wrote that psalm when he was in a cave of hiding come to the realization that God was going to be with him, that God was going to help him, but God had to have control. When, I, I wonder how many times David, when he wrote that, when he wrote those words down, he ever thought how many lives it would affect from that day on. Folks, that was nearly, six, that was nearly uh, uh, 4, thousand years ago when David wrote that psalm. How many people has come and gone and quoted that passage of scripture and has been helped by the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. How many kids has memorized those verses? How many has got up and quoted it? Just think about that. You say, can God use me like that? Could God use, I got to thinking, I, I mentioned Charles Spurgeon a while ago, and I know who Charles Spurgeon was. I, I understand a lot of his life. I've read his books. I've read his messages. I, and I know a lot of his quotes. Uh, but listen, some of the things in which he has said still ring through the ears of preachers today, through their words, into the hearts and the lives of people in the, in the pews. And it's helping people along the way. You say, can God use them that way? Can God use me? As I told Dustin this morning, I'll repeat it again. If God can use Moses' staff apart water, surely he can use us. If you want to say even more, hey, if God, if God can use a donkey to get a man's life turned around, surely he can use us. I'm just saying, are you willing to let God have control full control of your life, of your doings, of your goings, of your decisions? Are you willing to let God just take full control? Whenever he takes control, he has never led anyone the wrong way. He has never led anyone through into danger. He's always saw them through on the other side. If you want God to take control, if you want God to, if you say, I'm willing to let God take me to heaven, then you ought to be willing to let him take full control of your life. I mean, after all, we say, I'm saying I'm going to heaven. Well, let him take control of your daily life. Whatever you face tomorrow, put it in the hands of God. Folks, one of the best advices that we can ever get is whenever we're faced with a situation that we'd say, God, the preacher said I'm, I'm supposed to turn it in your hands. It's in your hands. I might have mentioned it before. A singing group in which my wife and I grew up with in church. We knew him very well. Brother Parker. They called themselves the Parker family. What a blessing. What a blessing they were. Seemed like every time this family got up to sing, the glory just failed wherever we were at. We would sit in a meeting and we would listen to a group get up and sing. People testify and everything was just going along fine. The Parkers would get up and start singing before they could get through the entire song. 
the glory fell upon the service. And people were shouting, people were going to the altar crying and begging and pleading with God. I asked the preacher that I was with one time, I said, why is it every time they sing that happens? Why is it that every time that they open their mouth, God moves? He said, because they got obedient hearts and let God control their life. Brother Parker, what a man of God that he was. He wasn't a preacher. He was a singer. Brother Parker wouldn't say a whole lot of nothing other than when he was singing. His wife and his two daughters would get up and they would do the talking, testifying, do the singing, and he would just sit there and do his part. One day, Miss Parker came to him and she said, we need to pray about a situation. He said, let's do it. They got down on the living room floor at the coffee table. They prayed over a situation. They got done praying. Brother Parker got up, started to go out the door, and she said, where are you going? He said, I'm going out to mow the yard. She said, but we got to pray. He said, we just prayed. She said, but we got to keep praying earnestly until this gets through. He said, I prayed and believe God heard me. I ain't going to pray again and walk out the door and start mowing the yard. You know what? He let God have complete control of his life. He asked God, told God about it, put it in God's lap, and he left it. We've got to get to that point in our lives and let God have full control of everything. I ask you today, does God have control, full control of everything in our lives? Let's take a moment with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Now, some of y'all may have noticed, don't always call for an altar call haven't been doing that for some time. I feel like a lot of us know and understand if we need to get something right with God, we know what we need to do, and we need to do it. I'm going to ask if you're here right where you're sitting. If you need to talk to God and say, God, would you please take control? Now, if you feel the need that you need to come to this altar and humble yourself before God, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Let's all stand to our feet, keeping our heads out, bowed, our eyes closed. But if you feel that you need to come to this altar, why don't you step out and come on? Just let God take control. Maybe there's something God, listen, God don't by mistake put these messages on our hearts and our minds. We stew over them, study over them, and read over them all week, pray over them. We come to the house of God and we try to deliver the messages without something needing to be done in someone's heart. Here lately, I've been preaching, it seemed like a lot about us just letting God take over and God do what needs to be done. Maybe someone's holding back and you need to let go tonight. I'm asking you to do so, not on my behalf, not because I said it, but because God wants you to. God's been wanting to. Will you do it tonight? Just turn it over and let God do it.